Hello, and welcome back to In Conclusion, We Have No Idea. I'm Camille. I'm Liz, and I have no idea why we haven't done this for like a month. You know me, sir. <laughs> I got distracted. Missed like a whole shiny. July there, Camille. Missed, missed most of July. Like, minus the first like three days. I got distracted, okay? It's not my fault. Oh, you get distracted? Oh, sure. Uh huh. Okay. Believe you. Totally. Because, you know, it, it's just 2020 moves, you know? You just you get 2020 distracted. mood, just missing the whole month. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. It tracks. What a year. I don't think this year was destined to be very good, anyways. Yeah. I just I think it just had a feeling coming into 2020 being like. This is going to suck. Not even like, you know, you get what you expect out of a year, but like, I mean, I expected little, but man. Yep. It got so much worse. It was so much worse than I expected. <laughs> See? So this year has just been like... Yeah. We should have known when everyone was throwing their gaspy theme 2020 parties. It's like, ah, uh, have you all actually read that book? It was kind of a train wreck. I don't even think it's the gatsby theme New Year's parties. More like, you know, I really think we're just playing like the 1920s, but in reverse. Yes. Ha, huh, man. The end of the 20s is going to be awesome. Maybe, maybe by like 2030, everything will have been improved. We will have a better president. We'll have so much better lives. There will be a global pandemic. There will be like nice things. Maybe we'll fight climate change. I don't know. Things can happen. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We've got- Maybe. Maybe, yeah. I mean, we'll- Hopefully. Oh my God. So, at the beginning of this year, um, I was emailing Caitlin, right? Right, like you do. Because I was like, oh, I, I just, you know, it's New Year. Probably should, like, tell Caitlin, like, what's my plans for this year? Because she had been sending me an email earlier that week where she was like, I just really feel like 2020 is going to be our year. Like, I just have such good feelings for this, <laughs> for oh, this <laughs> year. <laughs> I sent her an email back, and I was like, I don't know, but I have this really awful feeling that 2020 is just going to suck. And I don't want to say that I predicted the future, but I will say, like, three months later, we were all stuck at home in quarantine. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. See, my favorite thing about um, New Year's and all that stuff is every year, for, like, the past five years, at the end of the year, everyone's like, this next year's going to be so much better. It's like this year was terrible, but this next year's gonna be better. And then it just gets worse. And I think we're finally starting to realize that. So, like, every year, it's like the parties are a little less enthusiastic. It's like, woo! Another year! It's, this is the one, guy, And it's just like, with the undertones of just dread. Like, and I just, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I just, that's the vibe I've been getting from the past 10 years. Every year is just, oh no, but progressively louder and more desperate every year. We, we've all collectively come to the conclusion that um, people suck. Yeah. And usually every single year is just kind of getting progressively, progressively worse. It, you know... I mean, last year, personally, for me, as an individual, sucked just based on, like, nerve disorders and stuff and having to yeah. get that figured out. But I feel like 2019 was, like, weird calm before the storm, just, like, for the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like things happened in 2019, but not at, like, the level they're happening now. Yeah. Like... 2020 to me feels like the revenge of 2016. Like, yeah. 2016 sucked. Hated that year. It was awful. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend 2016. However, it feels like 
2016 just like went to the like the store bought a baseball bat and a bag of nails just made whatever weapon it could and then came back and just started beating everyone over the head yeah. with like a 2020 veneer yeah like 2020 just was 2016 didn't have enough so it needed to come back for revenge like hope and honestly, got new ideas i like, just like jk rowling getting on twitter and being like actually about books that she wrote 20 years ago well and then jk rowling getting on twitter now being like actually i'm a transphobe so there's that. Like, that's it's like that meme that's like, we were rooting for you. We were all rooting yes. for you. I've literally like just, now I'm just like so wild how they made like a whole book series and movies based off of a Harry Potter musical by Star Kid, right? Like, wild wanna, that they did that. It's wild that they just... It's, it's just 2020 is just the year that's like, you know, January, this seems so far away, but the first few days of January, we were all worried about going into World War III. Do you yeah. remember that? Because I remember yeah. that. And that seems so far away now. Like, January of 2020 just seems like abstract and like it was like a whole other year. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It was World War Three, and then the Australian bushfires were like in February, I think. Yeah. So we had that, and then March was like, oh, just kidding, everything's shutting down now, and then we've been in quarantine since. And everything prior to March 12th of 2020 uh, just seems like it wasn't actually real, and it was just a weird fever dream before we it all woke like, up and realized that the real nightmare was the one that we were living in. It, yeah, it's like... That was like pre-2020. That was like the tailgate party and now we're playing. Now it's just like, oh, ha ha, it was like World War Three. That's so funny, ha ha. Oh no, there's like some fires. That's like really bad. We should take care of that. Oh no, there's like an actual pan. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> just gotten, like, everyone's just kind of accepted the fact that now we all will probably have to wear masks for the rest of our lives football's canceled and i'm absolutely devastated and <sighs> they canceled theater liz like my college is not doing their theater performances anymore and i, knew I know I mean, but it was like so my well my college isn't doing football this year like was mine like... isn't either i'm gonna miss my dad and i um, we had season tickets to go to the football games this year. We had four of them, so that means my brother and his wife were going to be. We were all really excited, and then they canceled the football season. And so we've decided that what we're going to do is um, just wear our uh, like our football gear and sit on the couch and watch reruns of, yeah. of games from last year. Games that you guys <laughs> just, won quietly sob into our hands as we mourn for the loss of something that brought like here's the thing like i understand why they needed to cancel and everything i'm not complaining about like that i'm not being like oh i needed football like blah, blah blah it's just like you know i'm a little sad this wouldn't have been a problem if people had just been smart and wore their fucking masks literally like 2020 has been wild because there are like several people that I just, like, can't ever talk to again, because they got all puffy about, like, people I, like, had no beef with, like, people I was, like, but, like, then people all, but then, like, people I genuinely, like, are they people that I know? I, maybe, I don't know, but, like, people I was, like, genuinely, we'll like, I genuinely, like, lots of, like, like, lots of, like, old church leaders and stuff that I mm. grew up with, like, people I was, like, pretty fond of, and it's just, like, they're like getting on Facebook and they're like, I don't think we should wear masks. I think they're bad. This pandemic is just a hoax so the Democrats will win the election. Trump 2020. And I'm like, or it's like, I'll be like, hey, I'm asthmatic. Maybe you should wear a mask just for my sake. And then they're like, they don't care. They're like, you've just been brainwashed. Or it's like, well, it's inconvenient for me. And I'm like, well, great. You have officially lost 
all of my respect. Like, it's like, I was like okay. It's like, Here's the thing for me. I will remember when the pandemic is over how people acted. Like, I will. Oh, no, for sure. And I will use it against them. Never talk to them. My whole thing yeah. is so I have a nerve disorder in my face, which means having things to touch my face makes the nerves flare up and my face starts to burn really bad. Kind of like, right. have you ever kept like a hair dryer on your skin for too long? Yeah. And yeah. it burns? It's like that, but like constantly. Really? So the disorder is mainly in my ears and kind of in my face. So having a mask that pulls on your ears kind of fucking sucks. But what do I still do? Wear my mask. You love I really, that. I get so frustrated with people who are like anti-intellectual and they think that it's all just a hoax. I'm like, do you think you're smarter than people who have like studied their whole lives on this topic? They do. Like, you're not, and I'm sorry that you think you are, and I'm sorry that you think that everything's just a hoax, but, like, you're not more important than everybody else. It's not a fucking hoax. (laughs) Like, wear your goddamn... The virus isn't going to disappear the second that the election is over. It's just not. Like, if you don't wear your mask, we're probably going to be pushing this into 2021, regardless of who wins the election. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter who wins and who doesn't. Like, it's irrelevant to the fact that a virus doesn't care about a human election. It's gonna kill whoever it, w- it fucking wants to. Yeah, so... It's like the whole thing with church attendance, too. Like, everybody who's like, God will protect me, Jesus will protect me. I'm like, Jesus will only do so much for stupid people. If you're just willfully ignorant, he's not gonna help you. I'm yeah. sorry. Whenever people are like, if I go to church, God will protect me from COVID. It just has the same energy as like when, um, back when I went to girls camp when I was like 12, cause you know, girls camp, there was this girl and we were in like bear country. And it was like, it's been like a bad year. Like there've been like several bear sightings and even like, Camps have, like, gotten raided by bears with people in them, like, at the same place we were camping at. And so we were told, by the campground, you cannot have food in your tent, ever. And this one girl was just like, I'm keeping food in my tent anyway. And she was in my tent, and I was like, um, I'm not getting attacked by a bear in the middle of the night because you want to have M&Ms in the tent. And I told her that, and she was like, God won't let us get attacked by a bear. And I said to her face that he would if we were being stupid. And then she told me I didn't have enough faith. And you know. That's just not about faith. It's just about It's common sense. God, like, will only do so much for people who are stupid. Like, I think you can cure a disease better than you can cure stupid. I'm sorry. It's just, it, like, frustrates me so much with people who are just, like, willfully ignorant and they don't want to have to listen because it hurts their ego or ruins their pride or you know they want to just have an excuse not to do something so they'll just say well god will protect me and i'm like well (laughs) honestly if i were god i'd just let you fucking die because i'm sorry but you can't you're so risking other people's safety and health and well-being by your stupidity like yeah wearing a mask isn't protecting yourself from other people it's protecting other Other people people from from you you. yeah so like you wearing a mask is just uh, it drives me insane and i want to just deck people in the in the fucking throat just throat punch them they'll never cough again they won't have a jugular I i just I feel like if it's a 2020 mood, it's just me wanting to punch stupid people. Yeah, but. it's actually, like, very stressful for me, because, like, I'm going back to school, and as badly as I want to go back, because I would shave my own head to get out of my hometown at this point, love my family, I'm done. Okay. And, but it's like, like, I don't, like, we've canceled, like, all of our social events. Well, okay, we haven't canceled our social events. We canceled sports and we canceled performances. But we're still having our social events. 
And I kind of want to shake the university and be like, you're not making a, if you are going to cancel something, you need to cancel everything. Like, that's that, what my university's done. Like, yeah, it just... would suck. People would be super bummed that they wouldn't have, like, their big social tradition events. But it's like canceling two things and then keeping everything else running isn't going to do anything. It's like, right. or we're still going to have gatherings. And it's like, so I am not attending anything. Like, I was, like, me and I was just like, I didn't really go to social events before, and now I'm not going at all. Because. Uh, my university doesn't have any social events going on, but it's because um, we have our major medical school up on campus. So, you know, all the hospitals and stuff for the state are all up by my university, so we can't um, risk yeah. having something spread around campus because then you risk all the medical students and all the medical students go and work at the hospitals that are in the area. And so you just don't yeah. want to spread them in the hospitals and there's like children's hospital up there and the Cancer Institute. So you just, we don't have anything going on at my university. All of my classes were actually moved online recently. Like originally I had signed them up to be in person, but they are all online now. And so I will be home for the rest of the semester before it's even started, which is super fun. And I'm definitely not um, kind of a little upset about that, but you know, it, it happens. And like we canceled all these like events all the way back in like fucking April. And people are so stupid that we're gonna have to keep canceling events until they get their shit together. You know, like I remember you tweeting like back in like April something about like canceling pride yeah and how everybody needs to wear their masks so they don't cancel pride yeah yeah uh-huh the gay and wearing their masks they deserve something that you the gays were wearing our masks yeah i would just like to point out yes they but i mean now all these people who are you know suddenly realizing that the president doesn't care about hundreds of thousand people dying it's the same kind of energy with the aids epidemic back in the 80s ronald reagan didn't do jack shit until aids care. started spreading into hit player ba his voter base he didn't care up until that moment even though it had already killed hundreds of thousands of people yeah and it's like that same kind of energy right now where our president hasn't cared, he's not caring, and he's still not caring, even though it's affecting his voter base. And his voter base is just blindly following him because they don't see it as a problem. They see the deaths as just a, well, it, I don't understand how they can just explain away all the people dying, honestly. Like, that's just, the amount of people who have died due to COVID-19 could fill up two of my college football stadiums. Yeah. At the very least. And that is a lot of fucking dead bodies. Yeah. It's but I have luckily been noticing that it seems like because of how poorly he has handled the pandemic, it doesn't look like he's going to get reelected. Like, we said that in 2016, he was a reality TV star. And I mean, well, there's also we got. a whole lot of other things that have come up. Um, like, just like, I feel like people have more incentive to vote. Like with the whole yeah. Black Lives Matter movement, um, Joe Biden's running mate is Kamala Harris, who is a woman of color. So I think that's really going to like push people to go out and vote. So I really think it's looking bad for him, which is why he's trying to Absolutely. limit mail-in votes. And because he, I think he honestly, I would hope that he doesn't get reelected. But based on how 2020 has been going. I don't really have that much hope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, based on how the rest of this year has been going and everything, like, okay. So, when the universities in the state all canceled, well, not canceled, I mean, they moved everything online for the rest yeah. of the semester. I was on spring break. So, I went on spring break, just, like, thinking, like, oh, haha, -ha, like, I'm gonna go back and see my friends, because, shockingly, I had been starting to, like, talk to people at the university, which is really surprising because I hadn't made friends the other basically two years that I had been attending. Um, and then all of a sudden they're like, no, you're not coming back. Sorry, 
figure it out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> what? And then the day that we were supposed to start back up at the university, well, up at, um, online, we, uh, we had an earthquake here. Yes. <laughs> so uh, all the classes got canceled that day too, because there was like a major earthquake in like the, uh, the valley where we live and everything. And so it was just like, if that's not a metaphor of how 2020 has been, it's like, oh, everything gets canceled. You go into this year thinking, oh, it's going to be so great. I'm going to come back and everything's going to be fine. And then everything gets canceled. Everything gets moved online. Then when you're prepared to just like, okay, well, this is a new adjustment that we have to figure out an earthquake. Yeah. I actually remember because my university, it didn't, they didn't kick us out. And they just were like, we're moving online, but you are welcome to come back after spring break if you would like. And so my parents were like, okay, we'll let you go back in two weeks. We'll keep you home an extra week. And then the earthquake happened, and they were like, no, nope, you're not going back. And it was, it was a bad morning. The earthquake happened. It was the first time I'd ever brought my boyfriend home. So he was staying with us. And an earthquake. We, we have not had a major earthquake in the valley in what, like 20, 30 years? And the one week he's More than here, that. The week he's here is the week we have the earthquake. Um, it's, no, that whole morning was funny for me because um, I was in that like state of sleep where you're like half asleep and half awake. So like anything that happens, you're kind of like, oh, was I just dreaming that? Yeah, or was yeah. It just like, when you're like not quite positive. So I was kind of like about to fall back asleep again. And all of a sudden my mom throws open my door and my dog is having a meltdown. I have this big golden retriever. His name's Cooper and I love him to death. He is he's amazing. Amazing. He's he's amazing. The love of my life. He's an asshole, but he's the love of my life. Um, but he is just flipping out. He is like running around my room, not like running, but he's like kind of panicked, like pacing around my room and everything at like a brisk walk. Um, and which is shocking because he is chubby as hell. And so him moving at any sort of fast pace is really a miracle. So maybe I should thank the earthquake, but he was like freaking out and crying. And my mom was like, did you just feel the earthquake? And I was like, I think that was, a, I was like, I, that was an earthquake? My mom was like, yeah, that was all that shaking. And I was like, okay, I'm, I was genuinely like, <laughs> I really thought I was dreaming that, but I'm glad that someone came up and was like, Liz, that was an actual earthquake, because I would have just gone to bed and not been the wiser and like not noticed anything. It would have been like, oh, yeah, okay, I probably just dreamed that. It was fine. Um, the rest of the house woke up, and we were all kind of sitting upstairs with my dog trying to get him to calm down. Um, and my dad had been running. And so my dad comes in, he was like, the hell are you all doing awake right now? And we're like, did you not, did, did you not feel the earthquake? And he was like, there's an earthquake? We're all like, you were outside. You were running outside. How did you not feel a literal earthquake outside? And he was like, oh, I was, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't feel it. So he was like, but I like got home and like all the lights were on in the house. And it was like seven in the morning. Yeah. And so that was um a rare occurrence to have all the lights on in my house at seven in the morning at that point. And so my dad was like, I just didn't know why everyone is awake. And why is the dog freaking out? <laughs> You're missing everything happening. And then we had all like the aftershocks throughout the day and everything. My dad was like, oh no, I really felt that when I was like, mm -hmm, mm, are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure you weren't just like running? Are you, you didn't feel that one? But I was already home at that point and it's not like, you know, like your situation where your parents were like, no, you're staying home. My parents were like, you're already home. There's not much more we can do. Yeah, it was, it was a bad morning. That's the first time I think my boyfriend ever watched me have a mental breakdown. We'd only been dating like a month and a half at this point. And I'm like down on the downstairs on the couch, just sobbing. My dad has the audacity to look at my boyfriend and say, you sure you want to get into this? And I'm like, Dad! And I mean, to be fair, if I were your dad, I probably would say the same thing, but, like, yeah. with my eyes. Yeah. Not verbally, just, like, look and be like, mm-hmm. Mm. So I'm just, like, laying on the couch, just crying, because my entire world has fallen apart. Whoa. And... I can just imagine it happening, honestly. 
Yeah, and he just comes over and he's like, hey, honey, you okay? And I'm like, no, and he just kind of hugs me and just tells me for a minute, and I was like, yeah, I'm keeping this one. And then I did, and he's watched me have several mental breakdowns since. So, like, this pandemic has not been easy on me or anyone. No. But it's been mostly fine for me, honestly, but, like, I think that's more due to the fact that, like, um... I spent most of my summer last summer in my room alone by myself in the dark all day because that was when uh, I was really starting to have issues with my face and my ears and it would burn so bad that like light would cause it to freak out and so I couldn't go upstairs so <laughs> I think this quarantine I kind of was like oh man at least I can go upstairs now like this is fine I can be in more than one room <laughs> and I don't mind that just I don't know, and then, you know, quarantine, and then there was the murder hornets, and- uh, What even everything. happened to those? Like, everyone they talked just, about them for, like, two weeks, and then they were gone. They disappeared, and then they just found them again in Washington, or Oregon. Always Washington. It's always Washington or Oregon, I feel like. Well, with the murder hornets, at least, it's because they get a lot of imports and stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Ports over there. Is why they get the kind of the murder hornets and stuff because they were murder hornets are not native to the United States or no, North America. Not. No, they're not. You know, and then the Olympics were supposed to happen this year. Do you remember that? No, actually, I completely forgot. Yeah, those were there were supposed to be some Olympics this year. That was supposed to happen. Tokyo 2020 no longer uh, gonna happen this year. Maybe next year. Probably Maybe. not, though, based on current trends. Or at least the rest of the world will have the Olympics. America won't be allowed. And honestly, that's probably fair. Have you ever seen that thing that's like, I always wonder in post-apocalyptic movies what the rest of the world is doing. And someone replied, honestly, I've always imagined that the rest of the world just figured it out. And they're just like living normal lives now. And they're kind of just looking over at America like, we check up on them. Nah, nah, let him work it out. And I feel like that was, like, a very prophetic Tumblr post. Because that seems to be exactly mm -hmm. what's happening right now. Like, everyone else is kind of figuring it out. And America is still just on fire. And, like... You know, it yeah. reminds me of the, like, the gif of the guy walking into the room with a bunch of pizzas. He looks all happy and stuff. And then everything is on fire. There's a guy swinging a shirt around. And... People are dead on the floor. There's glass broken everywhere, and that's America. But the guy walking in is the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah, that's from Community, and yeah, that's yes. yeah, that that's one of my favorite like gifts, and it's just, it's great. It's great. Uh, I mean, okay, this year this year hasn't been all bad. Um, okay. Oh, look at Camille. So yeah, brag. For the world as a whole, it's been kind of terrible. But, like, I got my driver's license and a boyfriend, so for me, 2020 has been- Yeah, you got your driver's license this year? Did yes. Did you not have your driver's license? No! Why? I- because, scary. I- I am 20 years old, and I just barely got my driver's license. But, I got it, and I'm a really great driver now, but, um, what happened is in high school, when I was learning to drive, I got into an accident, um, and it kind of scared me, so that I, I didn't see. drive again for a while, so, yeah. Okay, well, I'll give you that. But I got my driver's license. 2020 is the year I got my driver's license and got a boyfriend. That's it. Those are the two good things. Everything else has been kind of a... Camille, I have, I have no, no significant other... But I did have a driver's license. I got that in 2016, though. Yeah. So. Like you should have. Like like the rest of our high school did. I got my driver's license when we were moving houses, though. So what I would do is I would get up at 8 a.m. Well, no, 7 a.m. to go and do a road drive at 8 a.m., get back at 10 a.m., and then move for another 12 hours, then go to bed wake up and do that all over again for three days. And it was super fun. Sounds... I would never do that again. Yeah, yeah, no. 
zero out of ten would not recommend. Yep. But also, you know, I mean, I'm glad you got your driver's license and a boyfriend. I have said that he is acceptable, so mm -hmm. I really think that's the only important opinion you needed for that. Yeah. Uh, yep. This <laughs> declared to, that my boyfriend I'm is being. And I need to approve because I'm dating the one acceptable man on the planet. Mm -hmm. Well, there are other acceptable men, but yeah, John Mulaney, he's, he's already married. That's true. That's true. I mean, like, you know, I have my, my, my friend Ethan and yeah. his boyfriend and they're acceptable, but you know, anybody else, that's they're on thin fucking ice. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yep. Like, it wouldn't take a lot for me to be like, get out. I hate you. Go away. One slightly sexist remark and they're in the cold water. It's why I don't associate with anybody on straight TikTok. Oh. Period. I don't- I'm straight and I don't associate with anyone on straight TikTok. You're on, like, like, nerd TikTok, which is I, different. Yeah. I'm on- but I'm, like, on gay nerd TikTok. Like, I'm on Which is so funny, considering that you are a straight woman. Yes, yes, but I am, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I'm not mad about it. I'm not, occasionally I'll see, like, a TikTok that's not, like, a D&D &D related TikTok, and I'm like, what is this? What? Get this off my For You page. I'm like, why are there guys without shirts dancing? I hate it. Get rid of it. Right. Excuse you. Exactly. I I haven't really ran into that scenario as much. Um, I'm pretty deep into um, alt TikTok kind of. Nice. Although, given that, um, speaking of TikTok and the year 2020, fuck the president, am I right? Yeah. I want to take away TikTok. Like, I'm sorry that a bunch of teenagers hurt your ego so bad that you thought that you had to ban an app where they have fun on it. But, like... I think this has really helped me come to the conclusion that we have a little bitch boy for a president. We really do. And I knew this back in 2016. I think I think we all knew it, but it like really just like solidified me being like, oh yeah, he's really threatened by a bunch of teenagers. Like honestly, if you didn't want to get pranked by a bunch of teenagers, don't make it so easy to get pranked. Like, yeah. Let, let's use the um, Republican logic. You were really just asking for it based on yeah. how your website was set up. I'm sorry. Really, it's your fault, not the teenager's fault. They can't help themselves. Yeah, yeah. We're all just a bunch of chaotic neutral slash chaotic good. Like, everyone... Except for Republican TikTok, they can just fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody likes them. No. Except themselves. I think one of my favorite things I've done this year is I went and trolled the racist. Like, yes, you did. Yeah, yeah, I went on and I did it with like the whole like I I did it with like hearts. I was like, just say you're racist and move on, big heart, sweetie. Just say you're a racist, big heart. And it was just like, it was like my version of the middle finger, and it felt very. Good. Oh my god. That just reminds me of all the teenagers bullying the serial killer on Instagram. They're doing what? There was a serial killer who had an Instagram, a bunch of teenagers on TikTok found his Instagram and then started like posting comments, <laughs> like little fairy emojis and like little star emojis. And I don't even remember what they were saying, but like it was pretty funny. They also did that to Donald Trump's tick, or, uh, Instagram, and he turned off his comments, so another win for the teenagers on TikTok. Man, teenagers on TikTok, just, they do not, they don't care, they just, they don't fear death, and you know, I love them for that, honestly, like, go there. I, I see, like, you know, we're both 20, Yeah. Which, it's like a weird age because you're not quite like a young adult or anything. Yeah. Like you're still like in college, but you're not quite like a freshman. Like you're not just out of high school. You're also like not a high schooler, but like technically legally you can't drink or like rent a car or anything. So you're in that like weird phase where, you know, you're like, 
I just don't know what group I belong to. But like, I hard key, like high key respect all of the uh, teenagers on TikTok. I really think they're doing great things. All of the those um those young kids on TikTok with their their fancy phones and their yeah lack of a will to live. Look at them go. It's like look at them go. It's like the world said, "Are you a do you want to die?" And they were all like. Yeah. Yeah. But not because of a like, change. Like what time, bitch? Like what time? Can we like schedule an appointment, please? Because I'm a little booked before that, but I'm free I mean, after, so. Yeah, I feel like um, the funny thing about Gen Z is for years we've been saying I want to die, and then both climate change and a global pandemic happened, and we were all like, no, not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Should have been more specific. I mean, let's be real. There is a generation of eating Tide Pods. Like, Gen Z would rather eat Tide Pods and die than die to a global pandemic. And honestly, I respect them for that. Like, yeah. if I were to choose a way that I go, I'd rather have it be something of my own volition where I eat a Tide Pod than have someone give me COVID-19 and kill me. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. I want it to be something that I choose. <laughs> I think is what Gen Z is like. Listen, we want to die, but we want to choose how we go. We want to die, but we want it to be on our terms. Not be given no choice. I want to have a choice in what I die. Like, I want it to be, like, on a menu. Like, here's your options. Like, jumping out of a plane, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Like, I just want to see, like, a menu of options. And I want to be able to choose. Yeah. I don't want to be given no choice. I'm going to die. I'm going to do it in my way. Yeah. Like, that's, that's very much the vibe. Yeah, that's just, that's just the vibe. Oh. I mean, Gen Z, dorming a Area 51, releasing yeah. the aliens. Yeah. Everything went downhill real fast after that. Maybe the aliens didn't want to be released. Yeah. We peaked. We peaked a year ago when we were Naruto running on Area 51, that was the peak of humanity. Little did we know that was the last good thing we'd do. <laughs> that was like the last genuinely funny meme that didn't have really dark undertones. Yeah, yeah, now it's like, I feel like every, I feel like every meme now is just like, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, we're all gonna die so soon, ha 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 ha. I feel like that's just a vibe for every <laughs> meme now. The Area 51 meme, yeah, it was really, like, the last kind of, like, this is funny for the sake of it being funny, and, like, that is so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But now everything is just, yeah, it's got the weird, dark undertone of, you know, we all might die, <laughs> so we might as well, and you're just like, ooh. I have that. Yeah. I've got a friend on TikTok, because I'm on D&D TikTok, because I play D&D. And I made one D&D TikTok, and now I'm a D&D TikToker. It's a weird time. 2020, just, it's been weird. But I was talking to her, and she was like, yeah, I was about to DM a plague-based campaign, and then COVID happened, and then I had to scrap it because it felt like it was just getting too real. Like, I had to okay. my campaign. I was in my discrete math class and we were working on um, like probabilities and like that kind of the theory of probability and stuff. Right. And we were talking about like the effectiveness of um, like vaccines. And my teacher, he looks at us and it was like this problem that he had already written on this homework sheet. He's like, um, so I made this sheet like four years ago and I keep forgetting to take off this question. So, oh no, it was it was it wasn't about vaccines. It was about um, disease testing. So, if you have a test that's ninety nine percent effective, what's the probability that it will have a positive answer when you're actually negative for the disease? You know, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like it has ninety nine percent accuracy. Maybe that kind of stuff. And so <laughs> that was when we were all debating about, like, 
testing for COVID and everything. And he was like, right. now this um, question just seems really inappropriate given the current circumstances. Um, so we're just going to skip that right now. <laughs> One of my classes is like, this just kind of feels a little awkward because... It doesn't seem appropriate, but also, like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just, like, a collective cringe, just, like, oh, this was not... <laughs> not the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we actually, right before COVID happened, I was in a bunch of student-written and directed plays at my university, um, and they were all set in a hospital. And oh, no. one of the, the plot of one of the plays was basically there was like a disease happening and one guy broke the rules to see someone and because of that he spread the disease to like the entire world and everyone died. And we're like watching this play get performed and we're all just so, this is no joke, like two weeks before, this is like, I think this was February 28th. So literally like less than two weeks before everything shut down. So we're all kind of just sitting there like uncomfortable, like, cause we're like, we were like in that position where we're like, we don't know how serious COVID is yet, but it's starting to look right. so bad. And this, we were just very uncomfortable. We were like, uh, um, and then my play of- I am not comfortable with the energy that we've created no, in the studio no, today. No, yep, yep. So it was, it was a weird time. It was, and then- Well, I was watching yeah. Denise and Ferb, and I was watching the episode that was, um, Night of the Living Doof. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which is the one where it's like- Vividly. If, if you get touched by a, a pharmacist, you turn into a pharmacist. And yeah. my dad walks into the room, he's like- this is a very apt metaphor for right now. And I was like, Dad, I just want to enjoy my show. Please leave me in peace. I don't want to have to think about the fact that it is very accurate to the rest of the world at this exact moment. I just want to enjoy my show. And then I couldn't stop thinking about it for the rest of the day. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, it was... It, it's a weird time. I just... And it's funny, like, this whole pandemic has, like changed the way my brain thinks. Like, I was watching a TV show that was filmed like 20 years ago, and there was a big crowd of people at like a dance or something, and I was like, Ugh, what gross. are they doing? What are they doing? Do they not know that there's a pandemic going on? They should stop. There's, this is bad, and I had to remind myself, this was filmed in 2000. Well, I do that all the time, like, when I watch TV shows and stuff, and, like, I see people, like, shaking hands, I'm, like, I get that, like, weird feeling that's, like, uncomfortable, that's, like, no, no, like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, like, you, like, recognize that you understand that it was filmed, like, a certain time before everything happened, but now that everything's kind of been going on, just seeing people, like, handshake or, like, hug on TV shows or, like, not wear a mask or, like, be in large crowds, you're just kind of, like, hmm, I don't... I don't like this. Yeah. This is this is not fun. I don't I don't enjoy this. Mom <laughs> help. Mom, pick me up. They're interacting with each other on the TV. Instead of Mom, can you come pick me up? Everybody's getting married. Which is the entire state of Utah, first of all. Especially right now. I feel like is it just me, or is it like the number of engagements and weddings after COVID like grow exponentially? Like, well, here's the thing: my brother got engaged in November, and right. his um, original wedding date was supposed to be May first. Um, oh, yeah. And they had all this like wedding stuff planned, and everything was figured out, and then. COVID hit, and we were really unsure about whether or not, like, we would actually be able to get them married, so, we, you know, we had, like, a civil ceremony, and on on their wedding day, so, I mean, they're married, but we haven't had the reception yet, we're not supposed to have it for, well, I mean, it's supposed to be in a month, this is the reception, is in a month, it's on September 18th, but 
like I feel like a lot of those like marriages and stuff were supposed to be they were planned pre COVID. Yeah. Like everything was planned yeah. prior, but then all of a sudden and then I also think, you know, you get a lot of kids graduating high school and then they pretty much immediately get married because you're out of high school now. What else are you supposed to do, you know? Exactly. I mean this is Utah, like people get married at like stupid young it's why utah has such a high teen pregnancy rate is because you get girls getting married and then getting pregnant at 18. yeah yeah it's yeah like yeah it's it's been a weird time i actually know um so i have been to i went to a wedding like a week ago like i think Mm -hmm. exactly a week ago and i'm going to two more weddings in the next week uh because yeah, I just, I'm 20 now, so it's a lot of my friends are older than I am, so it's not uncommon for friends of mine to be getting married. So, um, and I think most of these, I think all three of these engagements actually happened post-COVID. But I think mm. towards the beginning, and they were kind of thinking, okay, I'm sure this will all be blown over by August, so we can still have the wedding. And right. It's not like the wedding I just went to, um, they were pretty, um, it was down south where COVID is less of an issue right now. Um, like, well, I mean, the population of Utah is primarily focused up north. Yeah, so it wasn't, it's not as bad down there, but I was like, me and my boyfriend and his family um, and a few other scattered people were like the only people in mass. There was really social distancing happening and it made me really nervous actually. And You're like, it, I don't like this energy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, and like people are like coming up and randomly hugging me. And I'm like, because um, this was a couple of my, this was the people getting married were friends with my boyfriend. So I was his date to the wedding because he was right. a man. So he was allowed to bring a date. And just like, so he was like, this is my girlfriend. And so then people would just hug me. And I was just kind of like, my brain just goes like literally like panicked. It was like, you're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm wearing a mask. That should be a pretty good signal that you may want to ask before you hug me or like maybe right. like there were some people who were just like who just like smiled and waved and I, I appreciated that. I was like, thank you. Thank you. But I feel like we should just all adopt the um Japanese way of greeting each other, which is to bow. Yeah, I, I like I'd that. I'd rather bow than shake someone's hand any day. Yeah, and I'm already not a super huggy person. So it's just like, it's just like been amplified. But it was just really weird. And it just, it just felt like, I, have, yeah. I haven't shown any symptoms for COVID yet. So I think I'm, it's been like a week. I think I'm okay. But we're going to two more weddings this week. Um, and we're going to one on Monday and it's sounding like, um, they also got engaged towards the beginning of the pandemic, but it's sounding right. like they're more like, they're very like, they're very much like you will be wearing masks at our reception, you know, but so it's I feel a requirement, like, not an option. Yeah. I feel like at this point, it's like people are starting to return to normal, but some people are acknowledging that we need to like have this new normal, this like, okay. So we can't just not do things like we're still going to have our wedding reception, but we are going to put precautions in place. We are going to say that you can only come from this time to this time. You're going to have to like just to limit it. Everyone will be in masks. We'll have hand sanitizers set up. Um, We are going to tell everyone to social distance, Um, that kind of thing. Like I saw something where they've, so I think people are like, but then there are other people who are just like, who never really transitioned away from normal. They just complained about how things weren't normal anymore and then kept doing things as normal. Who are transitioning back to normal and they're just like not wearing a mask. They're hanging out with all their friends. They're like, and a lot of them are like young people, like people our age, which is why I'm actually- They think they're invincible. Yeah. Which is why I'm actually a little nervous about going back to university because I've got a funny feeling that even though masks are required on campus there are still going to be parties happening i'm just i'm almost convinced that there will be an outbreak on campus and i think the second that that uh campuses college campuses open i mean they're already seeing that with 
with high schools and elementary schools and stuff. Yeah. Like they're already seeing outbreaks pretty much immediately after the schools open. Yeah. So I'm just going to be super, super cautious. Um, I shouldn't. I They didn't kick us out of housing just because we live in a tiny town and lots of students have nowhere else to go. So right. they, I don't think they'd kick us out of housing. Maybe the dorms would get, um, maybe people would get kicked out of the dorms. But I'm living off campus. All my friends are living off campus. And we all have leases. So our plan is pretty much if campus gets shut down and we go online, we're just going to stay put. Like, right. And we'll yeah, I out. already live at home. I don't have that problem necessarily. My problem is mostly coming from the fact that I, so I don't go outside very much. I don't really have a whole lot of reasons to go out. Um, my family, however, likes to go out and do stuff. So yeah. they're kind of, it's funny because I go over and I mow my grandparents' lawn every week. And my mom was okay with me doing that throughout the whole pandemic because her uh, logic was, well, Liz doesn't go outside, so it's not like she's going to get, you know, yeah, her par- my mom's parents' sick like I wasn't gonna get my grandparents sick because I wasn't going out and doing anything and so my mom was like frankly you're the only grandchild that I'm comfortable having go over my parents house at this point and I'm like oh thanks mom I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult um normally that would be an insult however currently with COVID I take it as a compliment honestly yeah but I talking to my grandparents about that and they were like you know probably we'd be more likely to get you sick than the other way around and I'm like are you guys going out and doing shit you guys should be staying home yeah <laughs> grandma it always, please it always makes me laugh when people are like I can't wear a mask I have a medical condition that makes it hard for me to breathe and I'm like then you really shouldn't be out anyway I'm not gonna lie I'm also just like please. and I mean my favorite thing is to call people on that when they're like, I'm asthmatic, I can't wear the mask. I'm like, I'm asthmatic and I wear the mask five hours a day. Shut up and put the mask on, you know? Well, and then also at the same time, we're having all the wildfire smoke yeah. blow in here. And we have, sh- you shouldn't even be outside to begin with if you're asthmatic. Yeah. Also, there's plenty of people with medical conditions who still wear the fucking masks because it's the nice thing to do and it doesn't stop you from breathing you just need to have the thing is is once you wear a mask for like 20 30 minutes do you really notice it that much no i've literally like i'll be like in my car not even around people like no reason to wear a mask and i just forget to take still have it on and right? i get home and i'm like oh wow my mask is still on i've like almost eaten with my mask on or like taking a right. drink you just you you start to recognize it and, and it becomes just noise it's like when you put on a shirt like you can feel when you have your shirt on for the first bit of time but then yeah. you know you just stop recognizing it after a certain point it's the same fucking thing with masks it's not making it hard for you to breathe. You're just not wearing it for long enough for your body to adjust to the new feeling constantly being on your face. Yeah. Like, it's just those kind of people who they complain about it because they only ever wear it for five minutes at a time. Yeah. Like, if I could, it was very hot down south when I went to the wedding. Very hot. It was very hot in southern Utah. Um, mm-hmm. And I just, yeah, very hot. And I still wore the mask. Like, I was sweating. I was dying. And I still kept the mask on. So, like, if I can wear a mask under the hot sun all day without taking it off, you can certainly wear it in the air-conditioned grocery store for 45 minutes. Even if, it's just, it bugs me, people who try and make up all these excuses, and they're like, I have a medical condition. And I'm like, you want to know what? Technically, given my my nerve problems and stuff, I don't have to wear a mask. If I wanted to, I could go to my doctor and get a medical exemption because it causes physical pain to wear the mask. And it's like almost unbearable pain. But I still wear the goddamn mask because it's the courteous thing to do. 
Yeah. It's not about me at that point. It's about helping other people. It's not about, yeah. you know, my face might burn for a bit, but I'd rather have my face burn for a bit than be responsible for the deaths of four or five other people because I gave them COVID. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that I have COVID or anything, but yeah. you don't want to be the responsible party. I don't think I could sleep at night knowing that I gave someone a disease that killed them. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things, you know? It's like, yeah, and it's, it's just weird to me. Like, to me, it's like a mask is like wearing a seatbelt, you know? It's, it's not exactly comfortable. Should be legally required. It like a should, be, should be legally required. And it's just, it's like, it's going to protect you, and if you are around other people in the car, it's going to protect them too, because if you get in a car accident, you, and you're not buckled in, you will fly around the car, and you could literally, like, your body could hurt other people. Yeah, and it's like, at that point you become a projectile. Yeah, and it's not like, every, it's not like, by getting in a car, you are guaranteed to get in a car accident, but you put the seatbelt on anyway, just in case you do. Kind of like, it does, it's not a guarantee that you have or will get COVID, but the mask, you wear it anyway, just in case you have COVID or you're exposed to it. It's like, it's, it, it's literally the exactly thing what you know. With vaccines for me, it's like, people are like, oh, you don't need vaccines. These diseases aren't a problem. And I'm like, why do you think they're not a problem? Like, will you think for a second why they're not a problem? It's because everybody was vaccinated. But the second that vaccine rates drop, they become a problem again. And you can see that with people not wearing masks. You know, we plateaued and started to flatten the curve. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, we don't need masks. It's fine. And then everybody stops wearing masks again. And all of a sudden it's a problem again. Like, yeah. people, I hate people. And this, If anything, this whole pandemic has taught me why I hate other human beings so much. Like, they're just self-centered, selfish, and arrogant. They yeah. just don't want to admit that their ideas are wrong. Yeah. And that science knows more than them. Like, and it's something really interesting. Um, my dad talked about, um, you and I were both too little to remember 9-11. He said after 9-11 happened, people, like, bonded together. And we were, like, working together, like, building each like, working through tragedy together and, like, supporting each other and whatever came with that. And he was, like, in the past, like, 20 years since 9-11, we have grown so incredibly selfish and conceited because now we're not seeing that unity we are seeing fighting and like well total selfishness just i don't and what's interesting about that as well is with the deaths of COVID 19 in the united states every day is equal to a single 9 11. yeah and it's and people just don't care and they're just they're like if it's not directly affecting me it doesn't matter and i right. it's just that's very sad to me it's like it literally, it's like heartbreaking to see how little people care for each other. Like it's like people, like my parents will sometimes ask, me, like I'll say something nihilistic and they're like, why are you so nihilistic? And I like just gesture. I'm like, it's like, I try really hard to be an optimist, but it comes to a certain point. Like if I am going outside every day and literally seeing people who are basically saying, I don't care who else I kill as long as I'm comfortable. It's like, it's just, it's like, how can I have faith in humanity when quite a few people are acting like this? Like, it's just, it's, so whenever I see those posts that are like, like, I know there's still good in the world. I know good things are happening. Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, it's like, like, it's like I mentioned with 2020, like, for me, I've had a couple of really great things happen for me this year. But if we look at, like, the world as a whole, it's not looking great, and it's, like, not looking like it's going to get better anytime soon, which is, like, it's, it's a little discouraging. You know? No, I mean, you're absolutely right. I, I have the same problem where 
like I want to believe that there's like good things happening and like obviously like there's still good things in the world like I have things that <laughs> and it's always funny I always talk about things that I hate all the time people are always like is there anything that you enjoy in this world I'm like yeah and so I'll list up all of those things and they're like that has nothing to do with other human beings I'm like I don't really think that there's a lot of human beings that have given me a reason to really think to myself yeah humanity overall is great because at this point, mm-hmm. with all the wars, the racism, homophobia, sexism, just everything going on, I really don't see a reason to. Like, I don't see yeah. value in the system that we're currently upholding at this point. You know what I mean? Because- like, we talked about this whole thing when it, I had a history class last year about nationalism versus, um, I don't remember the other word. Um, and nationalism is you uphold a certain group of people and anybody else who doesn't belong to that group doesn't matter they're inferior they are, it's oh nationalism versus patriotism you can be a patriot yeah. love your country uphold its values but a patriot calls out when they see something wrong a nationalist turns a blind eye yeah and refuses to acknowledge the faults in the system that they are ascribing to. A patriot will say, hey, this is wrong, we need to fix it. A nationalist will say, well, it's working out for me, so I don't see a problem. Which is why- You know what I mean? And I think that a lot of what's going on in, in America at this point is due to blind nationalism instead of true patriotism. Yeah, like all of these people are like, oh, I'm just a patriot. I'm like, you're not a patriot. If you were a patriot, you're nationalist. you would care about other people and the country. Like, I literally couldn't even bring myself to celebrate the 4th of July this year. Just because I'm, oh, no, absolutely not. I'm like, I'm not going to celebrate the 4th of July and celebrate my freedom when there are still black people being murdered based solely on the fact that they're black. They don't have freedom, so I refuse to celebrate mine until they get that. And people got really mad at me. Like, even my own family members were like, what do you mean you're not coming out to watch fireworks? I'm like, I'm not, co- I'm not going out to watch fireworks. I'm going to put I fucking hate you. fireworks. So, I fucking yeah. I hate fireworks. I was like. I hate everything about just. Yeah. Like, celebrate your country. Sure. But, There's a difference between celebrating your country, being proud of it, and then ignoring the problems within it. Yeah. And so. Instead of celebrating the 4th of July, I played D&D, and I honestly think that was a better use of my time. Yeah. I played Xbox. I was yeah. on my Xbox all 4th of July. I was with my dogs playing Xbox. And I would have rather been doing that than watching any sort of fucking fireworks show their bullshit. And besides the fact that, you know, these are the same people who are like, we love our veterans. Our veterans are serving this country. I'm like, well, you know what veterans have a problem with? Fucking fireworks. Yeah. You know what that triggers? PTSD. Why are you on one hand saying we fucking love our veterans and then turning around and giving them the middle finger and blowing shit up, yeah. causing them yeah. so much stress? Like it just seems inherently wrong to me. I just yeah. and I have so many issues with that to begin with. And you know, the American and military industrial complex I also have a major problem with. I don't think we need to be spending so much money on the military when there are a lot of other things we could be using that money for within our own country instead of going and fighting in other countries just because we have oil. You know, it's just Yeah. Where's our freedom being why is our freedom over in the Middle East? It's not. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's in the Middle East? Oil. Yeah. I don't think that we do anything like I, I I don't see a lot in the system currently that's giving me something to be proud of. Yeah. So but, but then and I think that's why a lot of humanity is self centered because the system that we're upholding is very self centered. Yeah. It's we've been raised in a like kind of an every man for themselves kind of world. And I'm not saying everyone is like that, but the system is definitely like that. Like I know like I like to consider myself a good person who does good things. I know a lot of good people, like, my friends are good people who do good things. My family, they're good people. And so I know that it's not like every single person is awful, but humanity in general, I, it's like, yeah, it's... Constructed systems that make it so that people are not equal. 
Yeah, and, and it like, allows bad people to rise to the top. And like sometimes people will say, well, really, if you look at it, a majority of people are good. But here's the problem. I don't care if a majority of people are good. A majority of people probably are good. But the system does not allow those good people to shine. The system rewards selfish people. So those are the only people who really have any power and any like sway on the world. So it's like, I don't care if a majority of people are good because those who aren't good are the ones who are like, well, and, and that kind of gets into my whole feelings on, on, you know, Black Lives Matter, but I really think that that's something that we probably could talk about, like, in and of itself, individually, oh, yeah. but I, I just have a lot of issues with the system that we're in currently, yeah. and so it, it's hard for me to be like, oh, I love humanity, it's so great, haha, <laughs> I really think people are good, because, you know, you watch everybody with the pandemic, and they're being very self-centered and very selfish, but... I mean, obviously, you see people in the stores and everything with, you know, they're all wearing their masks, and you're like, oh, okay, I can, I'll walk by those people, and I feel okay. I don't know. I just feel like 2020 has kind of um, really let the worst of humanity shine. It really has. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's sad. It's kind of sad. Like, it's like I said earlier, it's like there are people I used to like genuinely like get along with and really like, but it's like this year and everything that's happened is like, it's like if I saw someone like talk against Black Lives Matter, like say, well, actually all lives matter. I was like, great, you and I have nothing to discuss anymore. Or if it's like I saw someone who was like, I'm perfect. It's like, thank you for revealing to me that you are racist. And when they were like, it's not racist. I'm like, no, if you... Were, if you were truly not racist, you would be for the black Understand. Matter. You would understand that, yes. You would understand. You would understand that, yes, all lives matter. But right now, we don't need to prove, we don't need to prove that our lives matter when there are other lives that are currently being treated like they don't matter. You know, it's like, right. it's like the whole metaphor with like the, imagine someone has a fire and they come out, they're like, someone help me, my house is on fire. And then everyone's like, um, I think all of our houses are important right now. We can't just focus on your house. And their house is on fire. It's like, that's how ridiculous right. people sound. Well, I mean, you can take that metaphor as if, you know, one house doesn't matter and you don't do anything to help it. Problems from that house spread to all the other houses. Mm -hmm. So that fire will spread and all of a sudden you'll be in deep shit too. If you don't take care of the problem now with these people who need help now, it's all of a sudden gonna be your problem one day. Exactly. And you may not be happy once it's finally your problem. Yeah. It's, it's a weird thing. It, it's just, it's very... I don't 2020 know. has been really, really it's a like, year. <laughs> it's like getting punched in the face over and over again. It's like, the one like... It's really sad that it's gotten to the point that, like, there are lots of things that make me happy. Like, it's like, but it's like, I don't know. It's kind of sad that the thing, that one of the things that brings me the most joy in life is going into a fictional world to play a fictional character to fight fictional bad guys. It's, like, uh -huh. really sad that I, like, it's like I find a world that is literally plagued by monsters and like a horrible, awful place preferable to the real world we're living in now. That's kind of sad. Right. I, I, yeah, I don't know. For me, 2020 feels like, you know, when like a celebrity tweets something racist and then in the midst of them trying to apologize for saying something racist, they say something else that's racist. Yeah, it's like... No. Stop. You're not, you're not, no. No. You're like, no, this doesn't, none, none of this is, it. yeah. You, I... You failed the vibe check. 2020 failed the vibe check on it. Like, yeah, right from day one it failed. Day one with World War Three. that's when I really knew that 2020 was it's gonna be a year. Yeah. 
wouldn't have known if it would have been this bad, but you know what? You know, it's... That's why we have no idea. Yeah, we have no idea. And In so... conclusion, we have no idea, and also fuck 2020. Yeah. Yep. Ditto. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, we hope you enjoyed all that. Um, sorry it I have, so we have long. so many things to say. It, it, sorry it took, sorry that it took us so long to, like... I don't know what happened. Like I, in conclusion, I have no idea why we haven't done a podcast in so long. But here we are, uh-huh. back. Um, uh, we will hopefully have something a little. We'll hopefully have something a little more uplifting next week, or like something a little more. Talk about D and D or something. Yeah, we'll we'll think of. We've still got like lots of dumb theater experiences we can talk about. Like we've got lots of good things. This is like, this felt relevant today. So. Right. Uh, anyways, we will be back again eventually. Hopefully not in a month. But, yeah. Um, in, con- <laughs> in conclusion, we have no idea. Bye.